G'day Sports World Top 10 Sporting Disqualifications Oh, oh this sounds <laughs> fun oh, Yes Alright This was a bit of fun Alright You're right Number 10 in our Top 10 Sporting Disqualifications Who can forget The 2001 World Swimming Championships When the Australian Women's 4x200 Swim Relay Team Jumped in the pool before the race had finished, they'd come home, they'd got the gold, they'd beaten the USA, which was a massive deal. But unfortunately, the Italian swimmer still had a meter to go. And they were in the drink celebrating and... So they know, got DQ'd. Yeah, big big no-no in swimming. Can't jump in before the race has finished. <laughs> Wouldn't it be good if the NFL retrospectively put that rule in? We'd never have had a winner in the history of the sport because there's two minutes to go and everyone's shaking hands in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's true. The no, I, 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 I still remember the, the California NCAA game where the band ran on the field <laughs> and that famous touchdown. Well, that would have been wiped off the board. Yeah, that's true. So there'd be no touchdown and the other team would have won. Now, well, this look, begs the question, doesn't it? Uh, what was Italy doing in, in the race? That's true. Well, <laughs> well look, suspicions, <laughs> suspicions were raised, actually, because the swimmers came out afterwards and said that they were encouraged to jump in the pool by a cameraman. Oh. Now, the cameraman oh, was Joe. holding a camera in one hand and a bowl of spaghetti in the other. Oh. <laughs> oh, Giuseppe, I think his name was. Giuseppe. Yeah, oh. cameraman Giuseppe. So, oh. who knows? Should Italy have even been there if they're still going by the time we're celebrating? Mm. The fact yes. they were in camouflage was a pretty good giveaway as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but that brings us to number nine. And who can forget the 1984 Olympic Games, Summer Olympic Games? LA? Yeah, right? LA. Power cord? I was still in uh, just... Overdrive of joy after the 1982 Brisbane Commonwealth Games, but you're right. The 1984 LA Commonwealth Games was a uh, Olympic game. Sorry, was a special moment in time. Now that brings us to Madeline de Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah. Madeline de Jesus yeah. was a Puerto Rican athlete. Now the problem was she got injured in the long jump. Oh, terrible. Luckily oh. for Madeline, her twin sister Margaret was also competing. So they did the old switcheroo and <laughs> Margaret de Jesus took her spot in the 4x400 relay. Now, Genius. Here's what I'm impressed by. Their chief coach actually discovered it and pulled the team from the event. So a big shout out while it was their short-term loss. Talk about the integrity gained by Puerto Rico in the world's eyes. They've done a reverse Steve Smith, you could say. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And look, it, it isn't without its upside. Without it, we could have lost Mary and Kate and Ashley Olsen to the track and field. <laughs> where the TV series Full House would have never taken off oh. <laughs> if the spotlight wasn't put on the potential twin cheating. So good thing in the long run, I think. Twins really enjoyed a golden period there for a bit, didn't yeah, they? they really did. Before Thanks. technology ruined yeah. it all. <laughs> <laughs> Those little jerks. Now, bringing it back home, 2011 Australian Open of Golf. Good tournament. Oh, Good what tournament. A and who can forget Big John Daly? Oh, the, oh yeah. He was a walking oh. disqualification, wasn't he? <laughs> what a party animal. That's what a party animal, all right. And he must have party hard because on the 11th hole, he hit seven shots into the drink before walking off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. We've think, all been there. Yeah, I think he heard that the. I think he heard that the servo down the road was having a sale on Marlboro Reds and he just wanted <laughs> yeah. to get into it. Yeah. It's also not the first time he's downed seven shots on the golf course, either, <laughs> but that's usually vodka. <laughs> oh, big John. Big John. He threw, a, uh, he threw his six iron into the drink as well, oh, which, uh, <laughs> which one lucky fan souvenir. He beat me in there. I dived in after it as well, <laughs> but he had flippers on and uh, just, just beat me to it. Next time. Seems like back. one of the Australian women's swim team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was in there early yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, when I think modern pentathlon, I think Tunisia. Oh, yeah. Oh, and oh. who can forget the 1960 Olympics, Summer Olympics, when the Tunisian modern pentathlon team showed up ready to go. Now, unfortunately, in the first event, the show jumping, all three crashed off their horses. No. So not the best oh, start. No. Not the best start for Tunisia. They then were all removed from the shooting leg after all three of them almost shot the judges. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a, Good start. a bit of World War II yeah. hangover there or something. Bit of a grudge. From a yeah, different family or something. <laughs> and then during the final fencing leg, well, it turns out one of them could actually fence. Oh. oh. Unfortunately, they sent him out all three times, pretending to be all three members, <laughs> <laughs> refusing to take the mask off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the judges got a bit suspicious when he refused to take the mask off before, during, or after the event. I'd love to see him on the podium with his mask <laughs> yeah, still exactly on. Right. Oh, he's just going to 
just live up the charade for well, the rest of his days. I'm really happy the horses didn't get out with all that um, fencing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Speaking of horses, number six. Fine, Fine cotton. cotton. Yeah. Oh, what a horse. Oh, what a yes. horse. Of course, we're talking about the 1984 famous race in Eagle Farm at Brisbane. It's a big year, 1984, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. What a beautiful <laughs> There's a lot of dodgy stuff going down. They must have introduced some extra type of uh, film or something because they, a lot got picked up in 84. But yeah, old uh, Fine Cotton was replaced with a ring in. Bold oh, personality. Oh, that's right. Unfortunately, bold personality was a different colour and also <laughs> didn't have white legs like uh, <laughs> like Fine Cotton did, but the geniuses went out there and dyed her with some hair dye and got the old white paint oh, out of the just garden men. shed. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the problem. They used just for men. They should have been using just for mares. <laughs> but but uh, and by the uh, by the end of the oh, start of the race, actually, the odds had dropped from thirty three to one to four dollars fifty to one. Oh, well, that's a big plunge. Daz, yeah. did you bet on that one? Is that what happened? Or I won on it. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I cashed my ticket before. Stewards my brows were raised. <laughs> Stewards also got officials when the white paint was running yeah. <laughs> off the legs. So, uh, yeah. uh, the only thing faster than fine cotton that day was the trainer, Hayden Haitana, who did the bolt from Eagle Farm and <laughs> was next seen in Boggo Road Jail. Actually, <laughs> did some time. And, of course, the world-famous name uh, was effectively scratched from racing. Yeah. The Waterhouse. Robbie Waterhouse exactly was right. the bookie who organised it all. And, no good. Um, I think he, he, he got a 10-year ban or something until he was allowed back. Mm, and yeah. the family never recovered. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Water who? That's right. All right, now, number five. Let's get in the top five, gentlemen. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Whee! Whee! Let's talk about the sweet science oh. of boxing. Oh. We all remember that fight in 1983 when Louis Resto defeated Billy Collins Jr. Uh, oh. uh, 83 or 84? Uh, 84. <laughs> 83. Might have been a New Year's Eve, so yeah. the time zone got yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, Louis Resto just towelled up old Billy Collins Jr. Not a good sight. But after the fight, when Billy's dad shook his hand, he noticed the old gloves felt a bit wrong. <laughs> Turns out uh, Louis had removed all the padding in his gloves, which is bad enough, but he then stuffed them with plaster of Paris, oh. which when it came in contact with sweat, set hard. So he was essentially... Oh. You see, that's just clever. Boxing with a cast on. So he actually, he, he literally became Dr. Iron Fist. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Uh, it's a bit of a shame. I actually, I identify with Louis. I think it was just a science experiment gone wrong. And Resto was just a, a big advocate of forensic science. Yeah. He was trying to work on the old uh, early method of taking teeth impressions in plaster. <laughs> what, <a> dental records? <laughs> CSI was set back 20 years. <laughs> That's all he was trying to do. But yeah, it didn't work out well for Louis or Billy, actually. <laughs> Fractured eye socket, never boxed again. Oh, no. But, you know, like I said... His loss is science's gain. <laughs> Number four. Here's one of your boys, Dazzle Boris. Oh, yes. Boris Onishenko in the 76 Olympics. USSR, the old good old days no, behind that's, the Iron That's when countries bring, were countries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> bring right. them back. Jeez, couldn't they disqualify an event? The modern pentathlon. All right. Now, he's, we're talking a three-time world champion here too. He'd, he'd already won a gold and two silver. Oh, and fair champion. Fair player. Yeah, that's right. Wait, it seems to be the fencing where they all go wrong because he, he went up to his fencing event. Unfortunately, he'd illegally modified his epee, which is his sword, with a switch and an it's electrical a, It's a family circuit. show, mate. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So obviously when you hit him with, the, uh, with your foil or whatever, it creates an electric circuit and it sends off the signal. Yep. He'd put the old uh, kill switch in his in his handle and he could re register hits without even touching him. Oh, so he was just taking no. the old wild air swings, hit... <laughs> Hit, hit. It, no was, it was a little bit. I was watching that at the time. I was there for it, and and it really did shock the audience when uh, old mate came out, his opponent, and he was already been hit five times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only been standing next to each other. <laughs> but you know, look, he's living a good life now, Boris. He's uh, retired and he's a cow farmer. Yeah, and you know, fencing. He, yeah, he's actually done well. Yeah, the best electric fences out there, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> no wolves getting in there. Poor old cows, though. Like they just walk through the fences and they're waiting for him to zap them because yeah. nothing actually happens because nothing's actually connected. <laughs> I'm sure, he's not a horse trainer or yeah. Yeah. who knows? Get the prod out. 
This is one of your favourites. Cracker number three, the old uh, Shenzhen Swindle. Oh, 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 oh I participated in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got third, I think, didn't you? You were talking us through this in the tea room earlier, weren't yeah. you? Who yeah. can forget the 2018 Shenzhen Half Marathon, where 258 participants were caught cheating. <laughs> uh, that, usually you'd be lucky to get 258 people running in a half marathon. They'd already halved it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 258 participants caught cheating. 18 had fake bibs. The rest of them took a nice little shortcut through some bushes and ended up cutting up to three kilometers off the track. Yeah, no, we. Uh, I was part of that plan, as I said. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't get caught though, but our plan was to turn the half marathon into the quarter marathon. Because the spectators were getting a bit restless, the times were a bit slow, the smog in the air was slowing us down, and well, we were on world record pace after those shortcuts. You were, you were trying to introduce us to a T20 version of running. You yeah. was like, well, the, the crowds weren't coming for the big stuff anymore. Exactly, the streets were bare, so we thought, well, let's do it. And uh, well, by the time we got to the finish line, half of Shenzhen was out at the finish line cheering us on. Well, un- unfortunately for them, those 258 participants are facing lifetime bans from the event. And because it is the Chinese government, they're also facing lifetime bans from eating. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how they go. But look, look, well done to the judges who picked them up. Because as we all know, all marathon runners do look alike. Yeah. So they did. Well <laughs> once we got the bib up. and the, uh, yeah, the cap on. The yeah. bib on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Number two. The oh, combat. Here we are. Oh, yes. Here we go. The sport of cricket. We don't talk about enough cricket here. And who can forget 1979 when Dennis Lilly, a fast bowler, not usually known for his batting, came out with the revolutionary aluminium bat. Genius. The combat. Oh, it was genius. That's right. Unfortunately, it only took four balls because it started to hit the stitches out of the leather. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, England, classic England complained. Yeah. Yeah, complained to the yeah. umpire and he was directed to change bats. Well, aluminium's the same thing like the, the space stations are made out of, well, isn't it? Well, I don't think it was aluminium. I reckon it was some secret CSIRO experiment. Oh. <laughs> some sort of <laughs> secret material and... Look, when they changed the laws of cricket to say you can't use it, it set material science back 40 years. It did. The the, the space shuttle Challenger would still be flying if they were allowed to keep going with the combat experiment. (laughs) Still recovering. Yeah. But But, uh, yeah, it was the the bat that got disqualified, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. um, Yeah, well... We know that DK Lilly used to love swinging the bat at opponents. Imagine oh, if yeah. he got that aluminium to connect yeah, with someone. That's true, actually. <laughs> we could yeah. have a new sport. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jousting. <laughs> and finally, number one, personal favourite. Here we go. The 2000 Paralympics Spanish oh, basketball yeah. team. Oh, no. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, caramba. Of course, one gold. Well done. Massive achievement. Yeah, yeah huge. That's one gold in the intellectual disability competition. So fantastic. All about yeah, inclusive sports them. here at G'day Sports World. The problem was that one of the team members turned out to be an undercover journalist. Oh, so, those 60 <laughs> Minutes characters. Oh, and he no. uh, tipped off the media about the old fact that 10 of the 12 team members had no intellectual disability. <laughs> <laughs> we were just good basketball. <laughs> So why did they only get ten of the twelve? Yeah, they no. didn't. They didn't really want to cheat the whole way. They no, just went, no, no, right. We've got a bit of a conscience. It was kind of like the dream team how they had to have Christian Latner, the, uh, <laughs> the amateur <laughs> player. So oh, oh, the old white lightning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, and suspicions were also raised when the the intellectually disabled apparently point guard also competed in the chess competition. <laughs> <laughs> and who forget the uh, the allegedly blind centre who also won silver in the skeet shooting? So <laughs> they didn't cover their tracks too well, old uh, Spain. But there you go. That's our G'day Sports World top ten disqualifications. Yeah, since. <laughs>